let's get started. Like I said, I'm Landy Kieschnick. Um, we're going to have about a 10 minutes of Q&A. Um, so all I'm seeing is our one panelist that was able to make it, Damian Christensen. Um, I don't see yeah, cool. other panelists. If you are, um, if I'm missing you, then then we'll definitely add you to this. But I think it's going to be Damian and I answering questions. Um, so let's get started. Um, and like Morgan said, if you could please mute yourself, um, and I'll be asking the questions that were uh, added during the session. So um, I'll just kind of work down. So one of the questions um, was, uh, can ICEV be implemented effectively through distance learning, even if student licenses are not purchased? Um, the best way that I could answer this is um, it's not as of a effective but you do have the printable pieces that you can print out and give to your students. Uh, Damien, do you ever use this uh, method of giving your students a printout um, as you were distance learning this last uh, school year? No, I, I never did. Um, at my school district we are trying to go 100% paperless so that's really not an option. Um, we're also a one-on-one -on -one school so every one of our stu my students has um, laptop capabilities. So for me, um, it's just as easy to drop that in my in our LMS system and then send it out to the students. Thank you, Damian. Um, kind of on that same note, another question was, is a, what's a good way to use ICED with distance learning students who do not have internet access? And so sometimes that, that uh, printable piece as well. Yes, I did a lot of videoing. Um, and I asked I'm getting some I guess the background noise. Oh, there we go. Um, so yes, that printable piece is also another great tool um, for those that do not have great internet service. Um, another question was uh, if a lot of your students are primarily uh, speak Spanish, uh, we do not have translations yet um, for, um, for that, but that's something that we're working on in the future. Um, Another question is, what does it cost per student? It is $10 per student license. Um, so I'm reading another question, um, and Damien, if you can answer this. Um, this prior to the end of the school year, our attendance rate was about 50%. What will be the difference at the beginning of the school year for online learning? Damon, do you wanna answer that, how uh, it looked in your school? Um, well, we actually, our attendance rates were actually, <laughs> surprisingly, they increased. Um, we were, we reached out to every student, um, made sure that they had access um, to the internet, make sure they had access to their computer screen. And then if we didn't see them that day, um, as teachers, we had to reach out to them or a parent and we had to talk to either them or their parents to, and ask why they weren't there. Um, so that, I mean, it actually, increased the participation. Um, it also increased um, our, our parent involvement. Before we wouldn't have had that, they would have just shipped into school and it would be done. But through the distance learning, we were able to actually have more communications with uh, parents just to make sure they were coming to school or they were online. School. Thank you, Damien. Um, another question that, um, that I was gonna have you answer is, how do you uh, make sure your students um, don't cheat using ICEV? How do you monitor that on your side, Damien? I know from the ICEV platform, uh, the questions will always be randomized, so different students will not have the same questions, but how do you monitor that, Damien? Um, is there a good method for that? Well, I don't know if there's a good method to it. Um, the way I did it, um, so I had to see we basically had classes set up. So I saw every one of my students for a half an hour every day um, through the computer. So it was, um, I saw them every day, they saw me, um, and it was just a communication. And there has to be a level of trust um, with your students. And, and I flat out said, guys, it's easy to do it this way. Um, I'm gonna ask that you not do it. I did have a few instances where I caught them. Um, and then we just reverted back to what's acceptable and what's not acceptable as teachers and as students. Um, so I, that's probably one of my, the toughest things that I had to deal with was making sure students did their own work. So it's a, it's a big deal. Um, I don't know that I did it right, but that's how I did it. Damien, another question for you that we had, and I think this is a great one. 
um, what is the challenging issues using this platform for students? So as uh, maybe it goes back to monitoring their cheating, but what would be a challenge uh, for using student licenses? The first challenge um, is just getting them used to the program, being able to manipulate oh, yeah. around, get in there, um, utilize the stuff that you need to. Um, one of our biggest challenges um, as we not only had to use the ICEV platform, but then we also had to use our Canvas, our LMS platform. Um, so there was challenges back and forth, where to turn in assignments, what assignments to turn in where. Um, that, got little, that got a little complicated. Um, and I really, I, I, I think that's probably the biggest challenge is making sure that the students can just run the program um, and run it effectively. Other than that, it's pretty easy to talk everybody through. Um, we had actually um, taken our certificate, cert certification exam um, through uh, the ICV platform and, and none of these students had ever taken that before. So I had to walk them through um, each one of those. It was difficult, but it's not something that we couldn't handle on the online platform. Thank you, Damien. Um, Another question that I was uh, seeing is referring to other subjects. So uh, Connie Hall, our culinary panelist, she could not make it to the Q&A, but there is a session tomorrow uh, where Connie will be talking about uh, her culinary courses in the topped session. Um, there is also a question about forensic science. I have a teacher talking about how we forensic we have time for a few more questions. Um, again, if you could mute your uh, screens, please, so that there's not much uh, background noise. Um, and let's, uh, Damien, let me get a few more questions for you. Um, Some of these are pretty long. So um, one of the questions, this is something I can answer. How does this compare to Schoology? So uh, we did have a session earlier about Schoology um, and that is an LMS system we integrate with. So you can go back and watch that. And Morgan, um, can you put in the chat uh, the website where you can go back later and watch these videos that we will upload for that? Um, I guess um, if you if you just go to um, it'll be in the um, conference page. Perfect. One question, Damien, that I think would be great is what were your aha moments while using ICEV? So what were those moments uh, that really kind of clicked for you? Oof. Um, you know, there's a lot of aha moments in this whole um, learning deal. One, just the fact that the students were able to get on it. They could get their assignments finished. I could lecture through them. And it was done um, basically with my students not being able to put pants on. So, I mean, that's kind of a big thing that you can do this and be effective at it. Um, the other aha moment I had um, was at the end of the semester um, where we took our certification exams and they all did fairly well. And it's something that it, it can be done. Um, it's a little more difficult um, but it can be done. Uh, and to me, that was kind of a, kind of a cool thing to have that happen. And then they all do well on the, on the certificate certification exam. So that was my aha moment. So we did have a lot of questions about regarding student licenses. So, uh, um, if your students are in multiple, uh, ICEV classes, they just need one student license. Um, and so, they have that unique code um, whenever you go to invite those students. So they do not need multiple student licenses. Um, and so if we didn't get to your question um, that we, uh, we recorded it, so you'll be all also able to watch this, but if we didn't get to your question, I apologize for that. But uh, if you uh, have, I'll put my email in the chat um, or Morgan, if you want to throw my email in the chat, you can send me an email. If you had specific questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, but thank you all for attending. Um, and of course, what everybody is looking forward to is that session code. And so um, the session code to earn points for this session is uh, distance. So distance, D-I-S-T-A-N-C-E zero one and so i know morgan uh, will also throw that in the chat uh, as well 
Um, and so thank you all again. Send me an email with any additional questions that, that we did not get to. Um, and I hope you have a great virtual conference. Really?